video is going to look at Google Calendar and just show you some of the ways you can use it, including the use of multiple calendars and sharing of calendars. So you need a Gmail account and then you go to google.com forward slash calendar and then you'll sign into your account. All right, so I have two calendars operating here. The blue one is mine and everything every appointment that that is there in blue is my appointments and the red one for Harry is for the dog because he has to have his appointments as well so we need to keep track of what he's doing so you can check you can add over here where there's my calendars you can add multiple calendars for each person in your family including your pets so just by going to my calendars create new calendar I can create one for Betty And in creating a calendar, there's a fair few settings there that you need to look at. So you can just put a description in, you can put a location in, they're pretty optional. What you do have to do is make sure the country is correct and your time zone's correct. So you've got all of the time zones in Australia. Now you can share this calendar with other people. So Betty might like to share her calendar with her friend. So you can enter the email address of the friend. So let's do that. And if that friend is also a contact, then um, Google Calendar is going to find that and, and also fill it for you. And then with that person, so Betty wants to share her calendar with Linda. And then you've got to decide, well, what can Linda do with that information? She can see all of Betty's appointments or she could make changes to the events in Betty's calendar, or she could make changes and also manage the sharing. And if you've got some sort of collaboration, so perhaps the two of them are, are working on a project together and need to add uh, and delete events, then that would be the one to choose. In this case, I'm just going to leave it as see all event details. So Linda can't make any changes, but she can see what Betty's time is like. So just create the calendar. Create the calendar and then Betty will appear up here. So there's Betty's calendar at the moment. Anything we put in for Betty is going to be green. So you can click in the drop down box and you've got some uh, settings for that. So I want to change that to maybe yellow. So anything we put in for Betty will be yellow. We'll put an event in in a minute. Uh, if there are too many, so there's already a lot of information there. If you want to hide some of these calendars, so you can click on that and hide the calendar, hide the calendar, and then you've only got the one. If it starts to become too cluttered, but I want them back. So to get them back, you just go into my calendars settings, and there's Betty and Harry, and show them and then go back to calendar. So they're all back. Now you can have the weather as well. You might notice that I've got the weather showing up in and it's the next like four or five days of weather showing up in my um, daily events. So it's gonna be sunny. If I click on that, see the forecast for Melbourne will be 13 degrees Celsius on Monday. Now if you want to put that in, then you go into settings. And then there'll be weather at the bottom there, and you can show it. So if I to deselect that, go back to calendar. I'm going to make sure there's no save anywhere. Go back to calendar. The weather's now gone. So to, to, to get that back, you need to go into settings. Do it over here. Settings. And weather should be down the bottom there. show weather in Celsius or Fahrenheit, so with mine in Celsius. And you have some other settings there as well you can change for your particular calendar. So I'm looking at my main calendar here, what the uh, the language is. I've got changes to English UK. And the country and the time zone and the date formats, which I want to change to not the American version of anything. 
the time format, so you can either have 12 hour or 24 hour time, the fault meeting lens, so that will determine the uh, amount of each event that you set up. So when you create a new event and it's going to start at 9 a.m., then it's going to end at 10 a.m. because you made 60 minutes your default length. When your week starts, I like mine to start on a Sunday. And once, if you've got recurring events, once one's completed, then you can dim that so you don't see it and all you see is the, um, the ones coming up. Show weekends, yes or no. Default view, I like mine to be in the month. Uh, location, you can be more specific. I just don't want mine too specific. Then you've got the weather, a few other things. And then at the bottom, make sure you save it. Now the weather's back. Now there are other calendars here as well. So if you wanted to add a friend's calendar and they'd made theirs public, you could get the URL for that. Or you could add a calendar by URL or browse interesting calendars. So for example, if I wanted to have the Australian public holidays, and I can subscribe to that and preview it first of all to see what it looks like. So there, there is none in July, but in August there's a couple of holidays in New South Wales, Northern Territory, Royal National Agricultural Show Day in Queensland. So if you're happy with that, you can subscribe. And then when you go back to calendar, and we're going to August because there's nothing in July, then you get the Australian public holidays. Now, the uh, reason I don't use that is because I'm in Victoria and I really don't care what the New South Wales and Northern Territory and the Queensland agricultural holiday is, so it's not really useful for me to turn it off. Go back to browse interesting ca um, calendars and unsubscribe. But there is other there's. If you were in um, America or Canada, you could add your favourite sports team. So it's not very useful to me because if I wanted to add football, there is no Australian football. It's soccer and it's European soccer. It's, it's not useful. But if uh, you had something that was useful to you, you could add your favourite sports teams. So your baseball calendar. So if you're in the Major League Baseball and you follow the Boston Red Sox, then you could see when all their games are. So here is when the game is. It tells them that you're busy. And you could subscribe to that and back to calendar. So how do you add an event to your calendar or any of these calendars? So if I want something on the 9th and I want that to be a shopping trip, So then you need to decide who owns this event. So I've got multiple calendars and this one's going into Betty's. And then you edit the event because you want to put in the time. So it's on the 9th. It's not going to be all day. It's going to be from 9 a.m. And notice it's a 60 minute block. If you don't want that to be the case, you could make it a bit longer. You can enter the location and because you've got Google it can actually give you very specific locations. I could put a description in if I wanted to. I can add some guests. I can enter some email addresses to invite other people. Put it in a, a, as a specific colour. So Betty's colour is yellow at the moment so I'd leave it there. I could add a reminder. So I could have it pop up on the computer or if I wasn't home, an email, maybe an hour before the events. I want to be shown as busy. And then make sure you save it. And it goes in there. Now because Betty has shared her calendar with Linda, Linda should also be able to see that. So if we go to Linda and sign into Linda's Gmail account, and I had to be in google.com forward slash calendar first and then sign into Linda's. Now she can see Betty, Betty's calendar there, and she can also change the colour of Betty's calendar. So she can now see that at 9 o'clock on the 9th of July that Betty's going on a shopping trip and she can 
copy it to her calendar so you can see all the details of it and that's one of the, the benefits then of sharing so we go back to my account and look at other ways of entering events to create an event an appointment in your calendar you can do it in a number of ways if I selected the quick add I can add an event in natural language so I could just say lunch so I had a lunch appointment just put it in Tuesday at 12 30 p.m. and click add and it puts it in the the next available Tuesday because I didn't indicate what date so there it is there now if I wanted to then edit it I could go and edit it and put in the location put in the, the location and change the calendar so if I put it into Betty calendar then Betty's going to see that event as well and then you've got to save it so I could do it that way and then if I wasn't happy with it I could still move it and just drag it to the appropriate day if I said the wrong day or it was the wrong Tuesday I could just drag them to the appropriate one so I'll put it back and the other way is just to add an event so if I wanted to add something on the 16th and just click in that space that empty space and then add that event in that space so it's a holiday and it's going into this main calendar then I can edit it to put in a bit more location so it might be Queensland and then tries to be a bit more specific but Queensland will do then I can put a description in put a color in so make it a different color if I wanted that to stand out so if it wasn't all day you just deselect all day and then put in the appropriate time because it's a holiday it's a recurring event so you can repeat appointments so if you select repeats and this event is going to be for two weeks I want this to be on the calendar daily repeated every day and started on the 16th and when does it end because you can you can have a, a recurring event that never ends but most of them do end so when do you want it to stop appearing in your calendar you could say after so after five occurrences or, or better still put on a specific date so if it starts on the 16th and it's for two weeks 16th of July then it's going to finish on the 30th so I want it to end on the 30th and then click done and it can put a color save and you can see holiday 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 it just keeps recurring every day for a couple of weeks now to change the settings of your calendar you do have a settings cog up here which will get you into the settings or you can get into the settings of an individual calendar by going into the calendar uh, in my calendars and selecting calendar settings so for example go into calendar settings and then you can change some of the settings for that particular calendar Remem remembering to save we'll go back to calendar the settings over on this side are the settings for your general Google calendar and then you can go into your particular calendar there so in each of these three calendars I've got another section here reminders and notifications if I would like my daily agenda sent to me by email every day then I can select that and then save it so every day at 5 a.m. what I'm going to be seeing I go back to calendar is my agenda for the day so I get get that'll be today so I get you get a an email which gives you an idea about what your day is going to be like now the other thing in settings if you go back put that back to the monthly view and go back to settings and into mobile setup you can sync your Google Calendar with your iPhone or tablet or Android or Android phone and I have done another video on how to do that see the description for that and there's also this thing called labs which are I don't know experimental things that that 
Google employees are, are working on and you can put some of those into your calendar as well. So you can go through there and anything you think you might like, you just enable it. So for example, jump to date. If I enable that and then save. We've also got the world clock, so I can enable that and save. Then over here, jump to date. If I'm looking for something in uh, 2016 to put in, I can put I can jump straight to January the 1st, 2016, and I can put some event in, then go back to today. And then you've got the world clock for different times. So if you're looking at planning uh, conferences or you um, need to know what time it is to attend a webinar, whatever it is, and you can put different times in. So going to settings, you can add different time zones. So there's all that stuff in labs as well. So that's all for this video. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel where there are more videos just like this one.